Armed Forces Remembrance Day is celebrated on the 15th of January every year. We're joined this morning by the Chief of Defense Staff, General Lucky Irabo. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily this morning. Thank you. And it's an honor to have you here. It's my pleasure to be here. Well, Armed Forces Remembrance Day is a day of high significance, not just to the Nigerian Armed Forces, but to all Nigerians. Uh, would you say that the way we have celebrated it as a country has um, put in context the significance which it carries? Well, thank you. First and foremost, let me appreciate this platform that you've given to me to further appreciate our men and women who are working day and night to ensure that not only peace returns to our country, but the entire nation is safe. As you know, the Armed Forces is responsible for the territorial integrity of our nation and giving greater support to the civil authority by virtue of the provisions of the Constitution. So in doing that, of course, um, men and women have paid the supreme price. And with respect to having to celebrate the sacrifices of our men and women who, of course, are engaged in this adventure, and of course, especially for those who have paid the supreme price. I will say yes to, to a large extent. That of course, uh, there is nothing that you offer for those who have laid down their lives for the protection of the entire nation that can be too much. So it's in that light that um, why thanking Nigerians for the very valued uh, support to the armed forces that I like to crave for more. We can do better. We've doing well, no doubt, and I believe that we can do better. When you say that we can do better, um, what areas precisely are you looking at? Um, currently, I'm sure you know that we are engaged in various types of operation. And the one that is, of course, that is um, more daunting has to do with terrorism and insurgency, to which elements of banditry have complicated. And I'm glad that that, of course, has also been uh, put in contest by way of gazetting them as terrorists. And so to do this, which is something new and different from the conventional military duties, demands that support from the populace, the support from the citizens is increased. Not only by providing information, but also situating occurrences in a manner that does not, you know, disparage the, uh, the efforts of those who are engaged in this enterprise, but to give them some form of motivation and, and um, a sense that we enable them to say, look, we have the uh, citizens behind us so that the common enemy of the state, the common enemy of the people, can actually be focused on. But currently, I believe that there's still a, a number of grounds to cover in this area. Besides, of course, um, having to, you know, uh, once in a while, organize visits to those who are in the hospitals, those who's, uh, uh, who are widows, uh, by virtue of uh, the death of uh, men and women of the armed forces, who have paid the supreme price by um, providing some form of uh, succor to them beyond, of course, what the, uh, the military can provide. And I'm sure you know that um, um, every of our provisioning in terms of administration and logistics and welfare comes within the purview, within the, the um, uh, um, budgetary provisions. And so uh, in the light of the fact that the budget cannot um, you know, provide all that is required, uh, then, of course, you know that you know, some other you know, um, individuals, corporate organizations, and the larger society must be seized of this situation and then perhaps know where to come in. And that's precisely what we're saying. Have you made efforts uh, in that regard? To, of course, I mean, to, of course. To try and involve the private sector in the areas where you think that they can come in and assist the military? Of course, it's a, it's, it's a process. It's, um, uh, uh, sometimes you must also understand that... Um, as government security agency, or the institution of, such as the armed forces, um, there are limitations in, by way of um, 
having to go uh, cap in hand. Um, it's not we're not beggars, and we don't we don't intend, to, and that does not in any way uh, say that the government is not doing enough. No, not at all. These are civic responsibilities. We do not need to go to canvas for them. Um, in other climes, you don't go around, you know, uh, creating you know programs to sensitize the populace. Uh, so it's in that light. I believe that Nigerians were were you know. Uh, obeying enough to understand that these are part and parcel of civil. I mean, great. We have great Nigerians who understand this, and that, that's actually the contest in which I'm making uh, this, uh, you know, um, the statements. Well, General, I'm sure that you must appreciate Nigeria's history Correct. with its military. Correct. Um, and it's been a checkered history Correct. at the minimum. Mm. Um, and so sometimes that inf informs the relationship and perhaps how I think I was still in the process of trying to straighten out that relationship. Correct. And it sometimes, you know, ev evolves into how we eventually relate with the military. And that's why I'm asking certain questions. Correct. Um, first, there are a number of things I'd like to ask with the significance of the new day which mm. we have. We mm. know that uh, Armed Forces Remembrance Day was not always... January the 15th. Right. Nigeria specifically moved hers to the 15th of January for Correct. a reason. Yes. Uh, first and foremost, uh, maybe I should say some of it so that our viewers are not lost. For those who are not very aware, it was also to commemorate the end of the Civil War. Correct. Um, and where the Nigerian military was able to, you know, win back the unity of this country. Correct. Uh, we're still seeing issues that continue to confront us with regards to the unity of our country. Correct. Um, how would you say that the significance of the day is brought to bear um, on the everyday Nigerian? Because for a number of people, this is only happening within government circles. Uh, this emblem which we all wear um, and we have tried to wear to encourage the rest of the public to Correct. wear them um, I do not know that a lot of people understand the significance of this emblem would you say that there is significant awareness on the part of the Nigerian and the generality of the populace on the sacrifices that our military have you know made to keep this country where it currently is well, thank you. Um, I, I'm glad that you actually brought out the significance of this day, um, how Nigeria moved um, the Armed Forces Remembrance Day to the 15th of January. You're right that um, as part of the global community, you know that the Armed Forces of Nigeria is an offshoot of the colonial uh, arrangement. And so because we took part in the various uh, world wars and uh, in you know, both First and Second World Wars. Um, of course, there was an arrangement to have what we call 11-11, that is 11th of November of every year, to commemorate this kind of thing, especially for the Commonwealth countries. And so when of course, we had the challenge of the Civil War, and it ended on the 15th of January 1970, I'm sure you know, of course, just like Nigerians, as most Nigerians know that that war, that the war, that Nigerian civil war, which was fought for over uh, three and a half years, ended on the 15th of January by, you know, um, by the force of submission of their surrender, instrument of surrender to the then head of state. And so we felt that given that the unity of Nigeria was won back, and, and I'm glad and I want to thank you for that, was won back by the armed forces at the time that we have something to celebrate back home here. That not just joining the global community, but equally to signify something that is national. And that actually marks the beginning of the um, celebration of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day on the 15th of January of every year. Well, with respect to um, whether Nigerians actually appreciate the significance, um, I'm sure you know that um, our history is also um, um, something that needs to be escalated in terms of teaching of our history. I'm sure you also know that issues that have to do with civic responsibilities still requires a little push. I'm sure you know that the um, literacy level in the nation still requires a little push. And so when you bring all these factors among several other things, you know that quite a lot of work needs to be done. But it's like um, asking 
what within the scale of preference, what should be our focus in terms of uh, engaging in core military duties and other allied things that have to do with educating the populace for them to know that this is the skivance of this day. I believe that um, if you bring all the agencies uh, of government, that military may not be uh, the best to be suited to bring this understanding to bear to the Nigerians. And, uh, and that also links up to the earlier, you know, the rider that you gave, you know, by virtue of this question, which has to do with uh, military involvement and politics, I believe that that's what you know you, you try to bring out, and and what um, impression many Nigerians have with that kind of um, uh, you know uh, our past history, um, and so um, sometimes those who have um, you know very strong reservations regarding military involvement in politics of the past. Uh, may not actually give room for the escalation of discussions that have to do with, you know, repositioning the military, bringing the military to full, fo full focus in terms of what good they brought to this nation. But be that as it, as it may, today I believe that Nigerians are no longer in doubt as to the subordination of the military to civil rule. Um, I believe that no one is in doubt that democracy has come to stay. I believe that no one is in doubt any longer that the current military leadership and of course since the democratization uh, in 1989, that the military is well focused to perform its constitutional roles. And so going forward, I believe that um, some of these misperceptions that uh, many, some Nigerians have had with, uh, with respect to military engagement will begin to change. And I'm, I'm very hopeful that by virtue of um, some of the plans and programs that we're engaging currently, that uh, quite um, um, you know, good holds for us as, as we uh, uh, go uh, through the years ahead. Let me flip this now to my colleagues in Lagos. Gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Mark. Well, good morning, General Robert. Good to see you. Well, you know, yes, much as you've highlighted some of the things that need to be done in schools to ensure we ramp up that knowledge, relationship, significance of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. But speaking to people out there yesterday, today, they just don't have that kind of connection that I think the Armed Forces of the country likes to see such that they almost, uh, for want of words, own it. So do you think that there's something that uh, armed forces, soldiers, who we will see on a regular basis on the roads out there can do to improve that relationship such that that understanding and that rapport between uh, civilians and the military can improve such that when we hear the armed forces remembrance day, it rings a bell within us? Well, thank you, Chamberlain, for that question, and I'd like to appreciate um, um, what, you know, the context that you just provided. No doubt that quite a lot that we can do, the soldiers on the street can do. Training is a process, and training for us and the armed forces is a continuous one. Um, issues that have to do with... Um, public relations, that is when I'm talking about public relations, not in terms of the narrative that is given, that is your relationship with those that you, know, that you serve, your comportment when you come before them by virtue of your, um, your, your um, duties, your engagement in your, in your uh, duties, um, is something that I believe that um, uh, must be properly situated and then giving the dynamics of the society, uh, reassessing, reevaluating, and then incorporating them in the training process itself. So yes, I agree that there are quite a lot that we need to do, but I want to believe that um, um, given the interactions, the, the constant interaction we now have with the public in the light of the internal security operation engagement that we have, wherein uh, nearly all the 36, in fact, there is no state of the Federation where you don't find military presence on the street, you know, doing police duties, 
that, of course, uh, must have brought some form of coalition. Uh, not just must have, that is precisely what has brought in a good number of our personnel uh, along the coalition course with many Nigerians. Uh, and so in that context, um, they more or less think that the military the, the um, techniques, tactics and procedures for the military to engage with the public should be the same with that of the police. And sometimes it becomes difficult to begin to educate, to begin to make them understand that, look, a military man is an armed man, is a man whose training uh, is completely different, his orientation is completely different. We then bring ourselves out on the street, and that's why we must begin, we must, you know, continue to advocate that peace return to every part of this country so that the military of course will return to their core duties and leave the police and other security, civil security agencies to do their job. But that does not also imply that our being called out for military duties is something that is out of place. No, it has a constitutional backing. And so uh, because we're engaged in this, in this manner, we also have to continuously reevaluate our engagement. And I'm sure you are aware that uh, we have you know, um, civil military relations department, not just in the defense sector, but across the services, Army, Navy, and the Air Force. Uh, you also know that uh, by virtue of this engagement that we have, we have had to review some of our, you know, uh, our you know, dealings with the populace by having um, you know, uh, a human rights desk in, in, in offices, in the headquarters, and all the formations and units across the armed forces. These are new inventions, these are new creations that we have had to in place in order to give effect to the requirement for us to give um, you know, greater support to ensuring that the rights of uh, Nigerians that will come across now on a daily basis by virtue of our personal engagement uh, that are well understood. And also to make uh, those uh, who we um, partner with, talking about other stakeholders, to let them in into some of our core values, some of our core uh, um, areas of, um, of, of engagement for an understanding for them to be able to work with us and then, of course, carry out the, the, the job of um, educating the larger populace to understand, you know, where the differences lie. Uh, you know, when the military is engaged in policing duties and when the police is engaged in, in their traditional uh, duties. So, um, in sum, I would say yes, we still have some work to do and we're doing them and we'll continue. But then, on the long run, we, will be, we believe that uh, peace as we move further in the year, the year is still very young. Uh, I see hope. I see that peace certainly will return to um, you know, every part of this country. And that will, of course, give us some respite. And then we'll begin to reevaluate our engagement and to see how we could redirect our efforts to ensuring that the territorial integrity of this nation is kept intact. And uh, so um, that's the reason why I've taken time out to come to the studio, which is also part of our commitment to appreciating our troops that are in the front line and also to appreciate our phobias, to let them know that their sacrifices are not in vain and that we continue to give them all the support that is required to ensure that they live a fulfilled life. General, just a quick one. I mean, uh, is there any law or anything that the uh, that is out there such that when civilians are seen in camouflage, do they violate any law? Because usually we just see the military go really hard on such people, just as an aside. Well, um, I, I'm glad that you asked that question, Chamberlain. Um, you know, we live in a very peculiar society. I do not need to restate what the makeup of our society, what it is, what the level of, uh, if you like, um, discipline is generally. And when you compare it to some places, some other climes, where a few individuals believe that whatever practice go on in those society then it should be replicated here. They discount the other elements of social life in those society. They do not bring that 
to bear right here. So with that in mind, you, the criminals amongst us have had to take advantage of the military gears, military, police, and of course other security agencies, their gears to perpetrate a, a crime. Whereas ordinarily, uh, we'll be glad to see that our symbol is being used for good causes. But Chamberlain, I can tell you that a good number of those who use them have used them for ignoble causes. And so that br brings us to um, a state where you begin to uh, make certain assumptions. So it is better for you to be safe first, then by virtue of your investigations, you can exonerate those who are using them for good causes. So this, re this is where we are. But I believe that as we make progress as a people, as a nation, as we make progress with our awareness programs, with our understanding of what statehood is, as we make progress with the understanding as to what national security issues are, then of course these um, you know, settings will be properly you know, put in contest and appropriate actions will be taken at all levels to ensure that um, you know, Nigerians do not um, see us in very bad light, especially when they wear military gears. Uh, currently, I'm sure you are aware that as part of what we're doing, we are engaging with different stakeholders. We have those who have engaged with us to, uh, you know, to appreciate our men and women that are serving through a program called A Tribute to Our Troops. And of course, using that platform also to um, have you know, a few celebrities, those who could call role models, to begin to advance some of these values that we think must permeate into the society. And a good number of them, of course, have also spoken to me to say, look, these gears that you're giving to us, even when we try to display them, you find some of your you know, men um, you know, at various checkpoints having to uh, um, you know, ask us questions about them. I say, yes, of course, that will be, but then uh, with some form of courtesy, um, you 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 will not be manhandled. So these are these are issues that we are contending with, and I believe that uh, we are going to make progress with them. General, uh, uh, there is natural the natural temptation to ask you operational questions and all of that, but today we just want to celebrate the the military. Free free. <laughs> no, that, not today, General. Uh, 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 we just want to celebrate the military because we owe the unity of Nigeria to the military uh, but one thing that you know touches one is the sustenance of the activities of the military over the years that's why it's armed forces remembrance day one of the ways in which growing up we remember the military was to see that unknown soldier from place to place in different parts of the country so and you've spoken to some efforts being made to sustain uh, military civilian relations but I, I just, I would like you to give us an idea, what kind of image would you want the Nigerian to have of the military, of the soldier, wherever they see him or her? Hi, well, thank you so very much for that question. Maybe to answer you, the question to ask is this, what greater love than for a man to lay down his life for his friends, and in this context, for his fellow citizens. If we can answer that question by having to reflect in our consciousness, then of course it would be easier to have a self-advancement, um, that is, you bring yourself forward to appreciate those who have had to take up this onerous task of laying down their lives just for the love of the citizens and for the love of country. So I believe that Nigerians, even as they listen to me, and of course, not just only on this platform, as they also you know, get the sense that we're trying to promote 
you know, by virtue of this this engagement uh, through other you know um, uh, fora, then of course we will have been getting closer to the sense as to what we desire Nigerians to have with respect to this uh, day, a day like this that we have set aside to remember members of the armed forces. But you see, uh, 15th of January is only a day. But I believe that what we actually we mean is a daily basis. It should be a daily occurrence. Just as we have our devotions, on, you know, for, for very, ourselves and families, I believe that um, uh, there must be reflection during this devotion period for um, men and women who have laid down their lives so that each and every one of us can, you know, live our dreams in our nation. I do not think that is you know, too much to do, and I'm glad uh, that by virtue of the privileged position that I hold, that there are many Nigerians, millions of Nigerians who are engaged in this, in this enterprise, uh, praying for uh, men and women of the armed forces, giving their support in one way or the other, especially for the widows and the orphans of our, of our fallen heroes, um, to ensure that they do not regret, that they are also motivated. It must be the reason for, because um, the military as it were, you know, is, 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 um, is, is, is an institution that is also dynamic. Um, you know, many years ago, uh, you know, I was a young you know, man, I was a young boy that joined the Nigerian Defense Academy. And of course, over the years, after my training and then commission, I grew through the years. Today, I'm the number one soldier of the armed forces. And one day, I'm always going to exit. At the time of entry, there was someone just like me. And today, several years after, decades after, I am here. And of course, in years to come, of course, I will be exit there. We also, so it's a process. Now, what do we do for those who we need to come in? How do we motivate them? How do we bring them to have the mind to uh, to serve their country with the such love that everyone of us have exhibited over these years. This precisely is um, um, you know, what I believe should be done in order to motivate Nigerians that look, there is a need for us to keep the territorial integrity of this nation intact. There is need for us to preserve the unity and cohesiveness that we have. And today is only the military that in my view, that, that stand that position to, um, you know, to, to you know, um, give that sense of um, uh, national unity. Because you cannot speak of uh, sovereignty without a military. Military, for you to talk about a sovereign state, it's a state that, that uh, its territorial integrity is protected. It's, it's the military that gives it that form. And, and so where you do not have, you know, um, a professional armed force, I'm sure uh, there are examples across the world that you know that um, anarchy is just, just uh, knocking, knocking around them. So we do not want that here. And it's by virtue of the collective response, the collective, you know, action of um, Nigerians and of various stakeholders that will enable us to get to that shape and form. So um, going forward, um, uh, uh, we want to see in a better appreciation of men and women of the armed forces um, in such a manner that they are motivated to do what they should. Uh, not, that does not imply that there are no other Nigerians in other walks of life who are not uh, helping to, to contribute to the growth and development of our nation. No, that's not it at all. But it must be properly situated, and I think that um, Nigerians are, are well educated and, and we're knowledgeable in that sense to be able to understand the context that uh, we're making this um, this presentation. Well, General, um, you you talked about us asking the motivation question the other time, and it would naturally uh, tempt me to ask one or two operational questions since you have uh, asked us to feel free. Um, First of all, the motivation for those who are in active service now and motivation for those who may be interested in getting into the system as you did as a young man many years ago. Yeah, um, th thank you. Um, first is to appreciate by virtue of 
you know, um, encouraging those at the front lines, um, giving information whenever you see them, appreciating them, um, by saying, look, you're doing a good job. Uh, please keep it up. And where we have not done well, also, you know, point it out, but in a manner that somebody will know that you are, you know, urging him to do better in, an, in a manner that does not uh, disparage him. And then, of course, um, you know, also encouraging, you know, um, your neighbors to do the same. And, of course, also for corporate organizations to um, undertake certain, you know, corporate social responsibility projects that, uh, that target, you know, orphans and widows of men and women of the armed forces. And, of course, where um, government programs, government, you know, um, um, supports need to be boosted if those corporate organizations have the wherewithal to, to increase government efforts by way of providing certain, you know, tools for, for work, then uh, one will encourage. And then uh, on our part, we will, um, even though we've been doing it in the past, but we hope to escalate it by, you know, undertaking tours to, you know, schools to, um, to engage with uh, the younger ones for them to take, you know, ca their career in the military, encourage them to take their career in the military, among several other things that we hope to do. Uh, well, General Rabo, I must reiterate how remarkable it is to really have you to speak to these issues. And still on the operational uh, front, uh, you earlier said you referenced the, you know, the designation of bandits as terrorists. And you said it was rightly done, really. And I imagine ever since this has been uh, gazetted, has that changed your approach um, towards the bandits, whom we can now call terrorists? How, how much has that impacted Well, it's not like a switch, um, it's a process. Um, but i like to, from the outset, tell you that yes, a lot of engagements have been undertaken. Our um, tactics, techniques and procedures for engaging the bandits have actually changed too. The, the, the weapon systems engagement, that is the, the deployment of different weapon systems have also changed. And of course, um, within a very short time, you will see the impact of this of this engagement. Those who are who you know who are involved are talking about the bandits themselves. They are feeling the heat. I'm sure if you keep your ears very close to the ground, you will hear you know their rumblings. And uh, going forward, I believe that um, you know uh, peace certainly will return to every part of the country where they have had sway uh, hitherto. Two quick issues before I, I hand this back to, uh, to Mark Ware. I mean, you earlier on talked about how you want Nigerians to uh, see uh, the soldier, uh, the military man or woman. And for a lot of people, the way they, you know, think or evaluate the military is based on the, the results. So today they hear that people have been rescued and they're like, way to go, military. And then the next they hear uh, about abductions, killings and the rest. But from an operational sense, just how difficult is it uh, to battle insecurity in Nigeria? How peculiar is our own case for you? Well, um, you know... <laughs> Um, there are some of these issues that um, might not be appropriate to come to the public domain to speak to them. But let me um, say that asymmetric warfare, or if you like, asymmetric threats that we find currently are not easy to contend with. Besides, it is an approach where the entire society, that is whole of society engagement, that will be able to offset it. But you find that the assessment, you know, akin to what you just said, is only zeroing on the members of the armed forces. You know, discounting other stakeholders that must be assessed. I do not run away from the fact that we are at the forefront of this, of this fight, of this engagement. There is no doubt about it. And we stand tall to make our valuable input, and we remain so. But when those assessments are being done, it would appear 
that the duties of that of of uh, other you know lines of operation or if you like other stakeholders who must take you know very um, you know larger chunk of it is not is not is not factored and so this is the reason why i believe as we undertake seminars and symposia and which we have also lined up for uh, that um, some form of awareness will come i, I i'm not i'm not um, in any way trying to um, you know remove the cap that has been worn on the military no not at all but uh, if you are an analyst you must also know the the range of those that are involved in a particular situation and then understand their roles and responsibilities and be able to know who has performed and who has not performed who has performed optimally who have performed suboptimally so these are these are issues that i believe that you know in some other forum other than a public uh, domain such as this um we can we can we can give um, you know um, greater greater thoughts to them but i, I must tell you that um, the the times the times and the engagements are challenging and we are equal to the task. The interactions, the synergy that we have with, um, and as it grows, with other stakeholders, especially those within the realm of uh, defense and security and intelligence, is, is something that, uh, that, that is laudable. Uh, but of course, outside the government security forces, there are you know, those who are also involved. And don't also forget that we live within the global system. Uh, and so there must be engagement, of course, what you're doing. Um, it might not be so obvious to you and to, to so many Nigerians. There are engagements that are outside of the shores of this nation that we're also uh, undertaking to ensure that we have the best uh, um, uh, approach to problem solving uh, in, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our land. So, so go, going forward, um, I'm sure it will keep getting better and better. Chief, I'm just going to ask you quickly as we wrap up now, how would you describe collaboration um, amongst the military forces which you are overseeing? I mean, it cannot be better than this. I mean, we, I mean, here too, of course there have been issues, but like I said, it's a green, I mean, it's um, life itself, it's dynamic. And then experiences you build on the experiences that we've had. So when we talk about lessons learned, it's by virtue of the lessons learned over the years that have now made us to get to where we are currently. It cannot be better than this. But of course, I believe that um, as we also go forward, we'll strengthen the synergy that now exists. And, um, uh, and, and, and of course, greater good and greater results uh, will, will, will come therefrom. I, 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 I'm, I'm very proud of the men and women of the armed forces that, that I lead. I'm so proud of um, the service chiefs, I mean, the focus uh, that they, of, of, I mean, all of us have been in it. We, also, we have also seen over the years what the challenges has been, and that's the reason why it is not a tough, uh, you know, a sell to make them buy in into the need for us to work together. And that's precisely what, what has been done. So I'm glad that, uh, that I'm here at this time. Well, CDS, it was our honor to have you here in our studios. We honor the memory of those who have fallen. We have great respect for those who are currently serving. And we hope that you give them our best wishes as we celebrate Armed Forces Remembrance Day. We also hope that you will not shy away when next you're called upon, especially with regards to the current wars that we're fighting in our country. Security, as the president did say, is on a front burner. And it is on a front burner for many Nigerians. And we believe that you will continue to assure them um, as you continue to do the work to keep our country safe. Thank you very much for coming on Sunrise Elite this morning. Thank you and be assured of my readiness to be here anytime. And then to also thank Nigerians for the wonderful support they've given to us and we're grateful for both. Thank you and God bless.